Okay, yeah, thank you, Ayman, and uh, for the introduction. And welcome everyone uh, to the first panel uh, of the day. Um, we have a very distinguished group of business leaders uh, for this session, uh, and the focus of the discussion uh, for this panel will be on infrastructure as the key foundation uh, for connecting to the future. So if I could ask our panelists to come and join me on the stage, please, and then we will get started. Thank you. Okay, just to uh, introduce briefly uh, the speakers we have here today. They are in, uh, in the agenda, but we, first we have um, the C, uh, CEO of QMBN, Mohamed Almanai. We have the CEO of Vodafone, Qatar, Carl Wautel. We have the CEO of uh, Gulf Bridge International, Ahmed Mekki. We have the Chief Strategy Officer of Eshal Sat, Anthony Baker. We have the Head of Engineering and Information Systems, Nasser Rashid al Kuwari. We have the Chief Marketing Officer of Oridu Ian Dench. And we have Hashim Al Hashimi, the Strategic Advisor to MICT. Now, in terms of the format for this session, uh, I've asked the panelists to uh, each give some opening remarks regarding the National Broadband Plan, um, just to take a few minutes uh, giving their first thoughts. Then we'll move on to some questions uh, and hopefully stimulate some discussion amongst the panel as regards uh, specifically the infrastructure aspects of the plan. And then if we have time, uh, I'd like to open for uh, questions from the floor. Uh, I would like to ask for all panelists, please, at this stage, just to keep uh, opening remarks brief and to the point, uh, we would like to move on to uh, a wider discussion uh, as soon as possible. So, firstly, uh, I would like to hand over to Ian uh, to give your opening uh, comments on the plan from a reader's perspective. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a pleasure uh, to be here at this symposium, uh, connecting uh, to the future, to talk about Aridu's contribution uh, to broadband. Uh, Aridu has been at the forefront of delivering advanced ICT products and services since uh, 1949, when we installed the first uh, telephone exchange. Uh, as a community-based company, our brand promise uh, is to promote human growth and enrich customers' lives. National broadband is at the heart of uh, this challenge. Uh, we know from our experience as the company that built the network that is uh, fueling Qatar's growth that you need to be planning uh, 5, 10, 20 years ahead if you're going to deliver uh, the infrastructure that the, the nation needs. Uh, to put the current growth into, con into context, uh, the 2013 report, National Fiber Strategies uh, by Arthur D. Little, shows that Qatar witnessed the fastest nationwide fiber rollout in the world uh, in 2012. This is judged by the average uh, percentage of homes passed by fiber and the number of homes uh, connected in the year. The study was based on figures uh, from the FTTH Council. Uh, it also shows that there are clear, as we've been discussing this morning, clear uh, benefits to improving uh, broadband infrastructure. Uh, jobs are created, and uh, there is a permanent boost to GDP. Uh, Ultra-fast broadband also drives critical uh, diversifications of economies, uh, as small and medium businesses and entrepreneurs uh, are among the first to benefit. Uh, I'm very proud to say that uh, it's Aridu who's uh, uh, been supporting this, uh, this rapid growth. Uh, we've uh, been spending over 1 billion Qatari rials, invested 1 uh, billion Qatari rials, uh, to have Aridu fiber uh, pass all households in Qatar by the end of 2014, uh, replacing all of the copper cables. Of course, we have strong uh, existing connections with all of our customers because they're already uh, connected to us for uh, copper services. So this has made the task a lot easier to deliver the right uh, experience. Um, but of course, it comes with many challenges as well, uh, not least you know, block ducts and internal wiring in the home and, and, and other challenges. Uh, enterprises in Qatar have been benefiting from fiber services for more than a decade. All of uh, the key organizations, uh, including Qatar Airways and all the large uh, government uh, departments, have been connected on point-to-point -point fiber services. Uh, which gives us a strong understanding uh, of, of, of businesses. Uh, these are the advantages in the market that have enabled Aridu to become a regional leader uh, in fiber services 
And I'm proud to announce uh, today that we have more than 100,000 uh, connections on a redo fiber in Qatar, uh, which now covers most of the urban areas. Yeah, one, that's a good, good master. Uh, our home broadband uh, redo fiber is transforming lives, delivering speeds up to 10 times faster than the, the copper connections, uh, and giving customers access to next generation communications, education, and entertainment, including the Mosaic IPT versus TV service uh, that we provide uh, here in, in, in Qatar. Qatar has the world's 10th highest uh, inter internet penetration, according to the United Nations report, uh, State of Broadband 2013. Uh, impressively, Qatar is the only country in the Middle East and North uh, Africa listed uh, in the top 10. Our aim as a redo is to help uh, position Qatar among the world's best. In terms of regulatory support, governments and regulators need to move decisively to uh, fiber in order to support future economic growth, in particular providing clarity and a regulatory environment that uh, allows companies like Aridu uh, to deliver the best possible services and the best possible uh, value for customers. Uh, in 2022, Qatar will command the world stage uh, in hosting the FIFA World Cup. We fully support the uh, national broadband plan in making Qatar one of the best connected countries in the world and providing visitors with an ICT experience that will be unparalleled in history. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for that, Ian. Um, I think we'll probably pick up a couple of those comments about um, your coverage plans and uh, take up. It would be interesting for the session as we go through. Uh, secondly, uh, if I could ask Kyle to make his opening remarks, please, on the plan. Yes, thank you, Matt. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Please forgive me for my illness. I have um, what's colloquially known as man flu, so I'll be as brief as I possibly can. I guess Vodafone's job now is to provide some competition to the extraordinary feats that Aridu have managed to achieve in the last few years. Because in my mind, there's no doubt that broadband penetration comes from a competitive environment. So when I actually looked at some figures recently, I saw that Qatar was the 10th most connected mobile broadband country in the world, but only the 89th most connected fixed broadband country in the world. So I really see the objective now is to accelerate quickly towards the 2016 vision, which is to have two people who are able to connect every customer in the country. And I think that's the important role that we can play. I think the way that we'll be able to do that is working very closely as we are now with our partner QMBN, who are doing a terrific job of providing passive infrastructure as fast as they possibly can so that you can get a real consumer choice. Because I think the most important part of the plan for me is that the relationship between broadband penetration and economic development is very, very clear. And so that's the part that we would like to play is to continue to progress with that economic development. I finished. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was trying to be brief. Good timing. Thank you. <laughs> I'll look after that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Cal. And uh, I appreciate keeping your first comments brief. Uh, there'll be plenty of opportunity to, uh, to discuss it at length shortly. Okay, uh, let's uh, nice lead into QMB Mohammed. Um, clearly, key partner with Vodafone. Uh, could you give us your yeah, so first I'll, thoughts on the plan, please? I'll try to uh, be more briefer than Kyle uh, on that. First, thanks. Uh, okay, let's first, thanks, uh, Matt, for inviting me here and uh, being. Uh, participating in this uh, uh, event, and it's my pleasure to be with all of you here. I think uh, it, it's worth starting by thanking the team who has actually helped in keeping this plan, and all the participants who contributed in building this uh, plan for all of us in order to drive uh, the broadband industry uh, forward. I think broadband in general is a vital in today's digital world, and uh, no economies or uh, no development can happen without having a broadband, so it is the foundation for everything. And I think the plan is uh, identifying that uh, vital uh, element and it's important for the countries to go forward and get developed. You know, uh, many countries today are setting aggressive targets for uh, their national broadband plan and I think we have a much more aggressive target here in Qatar by introducing this plan. So we need actually to cope with it uh, as a country and uh, as an industry to meet the target that has been set uh, on today's uh, plan that we are launching. And uh, we as a country, we cannot afford to be lagging uh, into that race. 
uh, where targets are being uh, ag aggressively set for uh, all the nation across uh, the globe and we need actually to participate in a structured way and I think that this plan actually would help us to structure the way forward for the broadband in order to achieve the overall country's uh, objectives that are coming. Uh, finally, I would like to conclude that it seems to be this plan will make everyone change uh, their uh, course to the way that the plan actually has pointed out uh, in order to make it uh, an achieve, uh, or uh, a successful plan. Thank you. Okay, thank you for those comments. I will just move over to our next speaker. My name is Nasser, and uh, I'm in a different situation than all the, the other colleagues in here. Uh, we are, I'm, from, I'm representing the uh, Ashgal Public Works Authority, where we will be uh, more as a partnership with the, uh, the Ministry of ICT Qatar in here. We're supposed to support, and we're support, supposed to receive the benefits from this support too. Um, Ashgal in general, they're, taking, they're looking after all the governmental infrastructure. We are owning almost 30% of the government infrastructure in here. Uh, we are very essential to the ICT Qatar in here to support in, the, in regards of the broadband. And also we are depending on the, uh, on the results of this uh, support because we have a very massive uh, project and uh, this type of project depends on technology. One of them, it is uh, the intelligent transportation system, and there is another uh, project, heavy and expensive projects, which uh, cannot run by uh, by manual system, which is we need to apply the technology in here. Um, we're looking for uh, uh, two types of, uh, of benefits from uh, the ICT Qatar in here, which is internal and external. Internally, we're look, we need to uh, manage our projects and our system internally within the technology over the remote areas and things. Uh, and the second thing, it is the interaction with, with the uh, public and with the government. We need to have an uh, informative uh, system and we need to have an uh, interactive system with the others. We already started and established a lot of things. Uh, we are expecting a lot from ICT Qatar. And also, we are support, support an ICT Qatar because most of the uh, uh, execution land will be provided through us and there, and it's supposed to help and assist the ICT Qatar to succeed. Uh, the speed of it, it is very important for us. Uh, the support and the sincere support, it is very important to us. We're expecting a lot from them, and after that, we will. Uh, both of us reflect the transparency with the public and with the other governmental entity. Uh, the services start already since some uh, some time, as Her Excellency uh, mentioned, for almost 10 years ago, start uh, converting into a technology and into e-government system, providing the information and reaching you up to your house with the whole uh, services or the governmental services. And we're looking forward to have more and heavy and I, I believe that the next step, it will be a heavy, heavy data exchange, which require a, such a system and such vision to deliver this type of services up to uh, our end users and here. Thank you. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Nasser. Uh, could I ask you to pass the microphone to your right, to Anthony, uh, to give Eshel Sat's uh, comments on the plan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matt. I um, hope you can all hear me back there. Um, just one or two words about SLSAT. We were formed in, in 2010 and we recently launched our first satellite for Qatar in August of this year. So this has been a very proud year for us and a very proud moment. Um, satellite has some unique advantages in, in supporting the, uh, the national broadband plan. The good thing about satellite, it, by nature, it broadcasts its signal over a very large area. So everybody who can see the satellite as a ubiquitous service. Everyone receives the same quality of service. Secondly, the satellite is always on. The reliability of a satellite is very, very high. It has to last, uh, it's designed to last 15 years in space. Uh, ours is projected to last even longer than that. So it's a long-term solution. Um, it, it's uh, also very useful for simulcast. If you're trying to transmit something to everybody simultaneously, it's one of the most efficient ways 
rather than going through uh, uh, other mechanisms. The reliability is something really to talk about because even in today's uh, environment, if we look at uh, football games, the Olympics and things like that, you will see parked outside the stadiums uh, a, a satellite news gathering uh, truck and they will broadcast that live feed to, the end, to uh, an uplink station elsewhere and distribute it around the world. They still prefer to use uh, the reliability of the independent satellite link. Uh, another key thing about satellites is, is the, uh, the re resilience. So in disaster zones and things like that, when all else fails, satellite has a very strong niche. And you can see that today in the Philippines. There is a, a, a myth that the uh, satellites are expensive, but they might be expensive compared with uh, uh, everyday uh, urban solutions for, broad, for broadband. But if you, if you look at uh, connecting to that last 5% or to remote farms, then satellite can always be a solution, and it does become more cost-effective. Um, so I think uh, this is how we hope to support the okay. national program. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, I think we're going to uh, persist with the, uh, the, the table-based microphones. If I could just pass over to uh, Hasim, uh, representing MICT, just for some final introductory comments, and then we'll move on to some questions. Thank you, Hashim. Thank you, Matt. Good morning. Well, first of all, of course, as it was pointed out earlier, uh, it State of Qatar, we are very proud to say that they are in the front line uh, as regard to the broadband. And I think that this was based on the vision um, that the government had and it was executed. Now, I, uh, I will go back to the first uh, remark that was made regarding the spectrum. I think that uh, without the spectrum availability, of course, it would not be very easy that. Uh, we could deliver or execute the broadband all along. So in this role, the state of Qatar has played a very important role in the ITU, International Telecommunication Union's conferences. <coughs> With regard to the policies, I think Qatar, the state of Qatar is also ahead. Um, a broadband commission has been established a few years ago, and Her Excellency Dr. Hessa sits on the board of the commission. And this, of course, has has helped, without a doubt, of bringing up this plan that we have now, the national plan. The Commission itself had, had pointed out that we should have, or there should be goals, four goals for achieving broadband. And one of them was that all the states should have a national plan, at least by 2015. So we are one year ahead of the goal. On the other hand, of course, the role that has to be played by all, that's the service providers, the operators, and the regulators, they have to work together very closely. If we have to achieve the penetration, the main important factors, that's the affordability and connectivity, then they all have to work together. And I am very grateful that I think that Orito and, and Vodafone are doing very well. And the, the numbers, without a doubt, shows that. So I think that to come to the last point of the, pre, of, the, of the opening remarks, the last bit is the most important thing, is the execution. And this is why, as uh, Dr. Hessa had excellently pointed out in her opening remarks, that already the, the, the leader of the has taken that, that decision by forming committees, two important committees, that's the um, e-government committee and cyber security mm -hmm. committee. And at the same time, for execution itself of the plan to be, to be um, uh, conclusive and positive, the working group that Dr. Hesse referred to has been established. So I think that with all these together, all the, all the efforts together, we are certainly going to be achieving our target. Excellent, thank you. And to Ahmed, uh, if you could give us uh, Gulf Bridges final comments and then we'll move into Q&A. Thank you. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to start by uh, congratulating uh, 
Her Excellency uh, Dr. Hessa and the Ministry of uh, Communication and Information Technology for uh, publishing the National Broadband Plan. And I'd like to thank you for uh, inviting me uh, to this panel. Uh, talking about the international connectivity uh, and the dependency on the international connectivity that's increasing day by day, uh, talking about individuals and the corporates, enterprises, and even governments. And uh, the growth on the demand on that uh, connectivity requires on both fronts, nationally and internationally, proper infrastructure. Uh, to connect to uh, one place to another place uh, all over the globe, there are only two ways from the technology point of view, either satellite or cable. Both complement each other, 90% of cable, 10% of satellite. But they complement each other then to provide that kind of connectivity and uh, serve the end users on all the levels, uh, talking about uh, retail or commercial. Qatar, uh, fully aligned with the vision of uh, Qatar 2030 and the vision of uh, the Ministry of uh, Communication invested in both, in uh, subsea cable industry and in satellite as well. Talking about the company I'm representing, my company GBI, uh, which is majority invested by Qatar, uh, we deployed already now a fully operational network of 22,000 uh, kilometers of hybrid network between subsea and terrestrial, crossing 25 countries. And we're proud also to manage this network from here, the NOC, in Qatar, monitoring more than 80,000 points all over this network. So this is definitely a great enabler to the national broadband plan. And with the advancement and uh, the development in that sector, in the uh, subsea industry, uh, in the last few years, uh, allowed great and uh, enormous amount of data to be transferred from one place to, uh, to another place. Deploying a proper national network and with the national broadband plan, this will allow transferring this to the end user to make benefit of this kind of great development that happened in this industry in the, in the last uh, few years. The main pillars uh, are very clear for all of us when we read uh, the uh, broadband plan in the four sectors, uh, social, social uh, human, uh, and uh, also uh, all, all the economic, uh, uh, all the other se these four the, the sectors is matching as well the, uh, the establishing of this company when we started. Of course, beside making it uh, for uh, profit, uh, we are as a company we are fully committed to support uh, that uh, plan and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, well. Thank you all for your first comments. Um, I'd like to move into some questions now, and hopefully we can get some discussion going uh, amongst the panelists. Um, and I would like just to start this in, in the order that we've had the speakers. So uh, starting with Ian from Aridu first. I mean, you've already said something about Aridu's extensive uh, investments in fiber. I would like just to confirm that, you know, the scope and timing of that, if possible. The second one is that the plan talks about, or has at its heart, a very important strand about supporting competition and how a reader views that competition developing in Qatar in the future. And the third one would relate to the specific opportunities coming out of the 2022 World Cup. So if you could take those, please, that would be sure. excellent. Well, with regard specifically to the rollout... Um, Sorry, I mean, can I just, for all speakers, would you mind just moving close to the... Uh, the microphones, please. I think we're uh, having a little trouble with the I just, just lean over like this. Um, with regards uh, specifically to the, uh, the rollout of, of, of Aridu Fiber, um, I mentioned that we now have 100,000 homes uh, connected uh, to fiber uh, in Qatar. Um, the homes passed is around uh, 230, 240,000 homes. That's about 80% of homes in Qatar, depending on which. Uh, uh, figures uh, you know uh, you, you use in terms of the total households, um, and our target is to pass uh, around 90% of homes uh, by the end of uh, 2014. Um, in terms of uh, small businesses, 
we launched uh, a fiber for business uh, in the middle of uh, this uh, this year and we would expect uh, to well we're past pretty much all of the, the small businesses but we expect most of those to be migrated also uh, pretty much by the end of uh, 2014 so that takes care of the the the, the brownfield sites if you like and then mm -hmm. of course as greenfield sites uh, evolve, then uh, we'll take uh, yeah. a redo fibre to those sites. And on, on the question about competition, how do you see that evolving in the future? Particularly well, it's interesting fixed? because um, one of the things that uh, broadband uh, brings is it expands the whole uh, competitive arena for companies like Aridu, for telecommunications companies. Uh, we're already seeing in the, in the consumer space, you know, consumers are using, uh, they have an access through their smartphones and home broadband to a whole, a whole range of digital media services. So, you know, that's a whole new uh, part of the competitive landscape. And, you know, through applications over the top, customers are increasingly, you know, using services which are perhaps substituting traditional telecommunications services. So navigating this new uh, competitive mm -hmm. landscape is probably yeah, one of the the largest challenges. Uh, and that's true also in the business uh, segment too, if you think about, I'm sure we're going to be talking about smart cities, smart transport. You know, this is the domain of IT services companies, uh, vertical uh, IT specialist companies. So we're starting to expand the whole sort of environment, if you like, or, or the competitive uh, arena uh, for, and navigating that I think is probably, uh, probably one of the biggest challenges for uh, a telco. Or for all of us, actually. Okay, well, I'm sure our next two speakers will pick up on this point on and I forgot the last competition, question. too. Um, just finally, before we move on, uh, the World Cup, in terms of what you see as <coughs> the opportunities for a redo, uh, both fixed and mobile, what can you tell us? Well, I'm a marketeer, so, uh, you know, I, here, I, I heard the other day, you know, we often overestimate the short-term impact of technology, but underest underestimate the long-term. But... I really think, you know, we can see clearly now in, our, in, in my mind's eye as a marketeer, you know, all of the, all of the, po the potential uh, innovative services that will be available for, for, for visitors, uh, for citizens of Qatar in 2022 with the, you know, with the broadband infrastructure in place now, whether it's fixed or mobile, um, and with the devices that are available to us, whether it's consumer electronics in home for the connected home, or the mobile devices, the smartphones with the power uh, that they have. You know, I can see uh, by the, you can see, you know, the visitor coming, booking everything online. Uh, you can see the transport system controlled from afar. You can see, you know, uh, our visitors booking tickets, booking uh, entertainment online and change. So I think, you know, some of the things that maybe in the past we thought were in the future are really, you know, very, very uh, much uh, with us now and very much with us uh, uh, in 2022. It's very exciting. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Kyle, um, Vodafone's presence in the fixed market here in Qatar is relatively limited at the moment. You've already talked about your uh, partnership with QMBN. Um, I'd like to ask you which parts of the plan are most important for you in terms of you know, building up that presence here, particularly on the fixed side. Mm. <clears throat> I think the, the countries who've been most successful in terms of deploying broadband, fixed broadband on a ubiquitous basis, have always built it on one single infrastructure. And I think Qatar, because of the size and scale of the country being small, it means that one single infrastructure is going to be the answer. So I think the most important part of the plan for me is when it talks about one single infrastructure being the right one to build. So I think that's most important because I think that gives you efficiency and scale as fast as you possibly can and allows for competition to be at the retail end rather than specifically in the infrastructure end. Okay, so yeah, the, I mean, the plan does talk about minimising duplication of assets. So that's what you're referring to, I that's guess. That's what I'm referring yeah. to, yes. Uh, and in terms of your relationship with QMBN and taking this forward, do you want to say a little bit about that? Now yeah, stage. sure. So um, our relationship with QMBN now is a joint deployment plan. So we have a three-year plan agreed to deploy. We are working very closely with them now. We've connected our first corporate customers in West Bay and we now have four compounds connected so we can provide retail services 
um, to those compounds. So I think that's very exciting. We have a good collaboration. It's a very ambitious thing that we're doing, I think, and it will be the first time in the world that a commercial and government organisation have successfully deployed a private partnership mm -hmm. together. So I, th I think that makes us very optimistic about the opportunity for competition now. Okay, very good. Um, just thinking slightly longer term about what Vodafone sees you know, as the opportunity in Qatar, both on, on your fixed and mobile networks, long term, ex on the assumption that there's extensive deployment that you have access to. You know, what's, what's your vision for Vodafone in this market? Well, first of all, I think customers are, should and will worry much less about what's the technology that delivers a solution to them. So I think over time, convergence to me means that what a customer will be thinking about is, in my home, I want a broadband connection, I want TV, I want access to content, I want Wi-Fi. So that's certainly what's happening in Europe, where people are beginning to bundle and buy products together and are much less worried about how you actually get the connection and bandwidth into their home. Secondly, um, as Ian just mentioned, I think the really exciting part of, of Qatar is going to be the smart cities. So we have some developments here like Musharraf and Lucille and the rail project, where you're going to see first deployments of very, very innovative smart technology. And I think to me that that's the part that I think this greenfield development part is going to be very exciting and, and will allow us to bring lots of new cutting edge technology to the country. Mm -hmm. Great, okay. Well, thank you. That's very, very interesting first comments. And Mohammed, it's a good link again back to yourself in terms of you know, QMBN, I guess, has faced some challenges since its inception in terms of you know, developing its business. Uh, what, what do you see in the plan that helps you overcome those barriers and accelerate rollout? Yeah, yeah. as you spotted right, uh, QMBN has been facing challenges since the start of uh, Q QMBN, and, and this is mainly because of the model and how it's construct uh, constructed and the, the, the acceptance or the integration of the model within the existing ecosystem that exists in Qatar. So we, we, could, we could see challenges in terms of integrating QMBN within the utility framework that exists in the country and how QMBN can have access to that framework. Uh, or integrate uh, with it in a specific and uh, access to the right of way and the ducts and the available infrastructure that exists in the country. And I think the plan uh, pointed out a few of the action points that would actually help QMBN to move forward in achieving the causes and the goals of uh, why QMBN was uh, established. The major one that uh, I would see as an action point, which is uh, the duct access uh, issues and the availability of uh, or the, uh, the review of the framework of the right, right of way and how that would be uh, managed uh, going forward. Uh, additionally, also the uh, inbuilding cabling issue which exists today, I think uh, whatever inbuilding exists in the brownfield area does not meet the requirement to go forward with the uh, fiber, uh, fiber technology and there, there is a need uh, to review that and invest either from the government or the private entities uh, uh, on that area to go, to go forward. Uh, additionally also is the uh, efficient resource management. This is a, a very critical issue because we need to manage things effic uh, efficiently. As Kyle mentioned, the size of the market does not allow actually that everyone builds as we go. Otherwise, we will be uh, having uh, a monopoly situation for uh, some of the existing uh, operators in the country and that would continue naturally w without doing anything but uh, seeing the market size and making sure that uh, the resources are being managed efficiently across the different operators would actually make sure that competition takes place and uh, uh, such players as QNBN, Vodafone and maybe in the future uh, would be able to, uh, uh, to play in our market. Would you be able to tell us a little bit about your um, you know, ambitions in terms of rollout in the future? Yeah. Well, we started as, uh, maybe the majority would know that QMBN has started as a government initiative somewhere in 2009. The company came to life in 2011 and we connected the first customer uh, in 2012, early 2012. And uh, as I'm sitting, I'm connecting the two gentlemen on my right and on my left. I think all the uh, international connectivity of Vodafone and some uh, other organization in Qatar is going through QMBN network to uh, our colleague in, G in GPI and soon hopefully we will add Salesat once their infrastructure is uh, hopefully ready. Apart from that, we, we have passed almost 
10% uh, of the total uh, household and residential units. And I think uh, we focus mainly on uh, the critical business district that exists in Qatar. So we see all the areas uh, outside, all the towers area uh, in, in West Bay almost has been passed by QMBN network and we started connecting uh, customer around it. Uh, I think over the uh, past few years we were building the factory. Now the factory uh, has been uh, built, has been completed and we are scaling up to, the, uh, uh, to speed up our rollout over the coming three years. Uh, to achieve the target that has been uh, set in our uh, coverage obligation in the license. And just one final one, picking up again this, this concept of you know, supporting healthy competition in the market, which is the, one of the first, uh, the first pillar of the plan, really. Uh, what's, what's your feedback from the market about the impact that QMBN might have long term as a catalyst for competition? Yeah, it, it's, it's very interesting feedback because we, we would see actually lots of interest from many uh, entities. Uh, my colleague here, Nasser from Ashgal, for example, we are supporting him in many of the, the projects that they are executing, them, like the intelligence traffic system, for example. In health sector, we, we see lots of demand and lots of initiative. We are trying to support the central project, for example. Uh, plenty of opportunity that exists uh, today in the market, and there is a very high potential for it. Uh, it's a new area that ha uh, hasn't been served and opportunity do, do come and require an infrastructure. Uh, it's worth also mentioning that uh, QMBN by its, uh, by its model is in an open network for all operators. Yeah. So whatever we do actually, we do it as an open infrastructure. So the connectivity that we deliver to Vodafone, for example, today on the same connectivity, we can uh, introduce other operator uh, over the same link, which is uh, something that would support competition and would make it as a catalyst of competition in the country. Yep. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, you picked up a couple of points there about access issues, and I think it'd be useful now just to move to Nasser, uh, representing Ashgal. Uh, the plan makes some points about passive infrastructure being a fundamental building block of, of, of new networks and competition. Uh, and one of the things specifically asked for is uh, you know, existing duct ownership to be clarified um, by the end of this year, by 20. So that's a pretty tall order now, given we only have 20, or 20 days or so. What issues do you perceive in terms of trying to understand duct ownership in a, in a, in a nation such as Qatar? Um, and again, if you could speak very closely to the microphone, please, just so our guests at the back can hear. Of Thank course. you. Uh, before uh, I start about this, those issues, uh, we are keen in here in Qatar for having um, the uh, broadband network over here to depend on and to start up with. But also, uh, we are not the owners for uh, the corridor, the uh, telecommunication corridor within the road corridors and things like this. So the ownership of this, it is uh, belong to the ICT uh, uh, ministry in Qatar in here, and they can uh, utilize this uh, corridors to coordinate with all the telecommunication or any networks happens over there. Uh, our task in here, it is to regulate the usage of those corridors and not letting anybody go into the others uh, uh, rules over there and that's all uh, uh, to protect your your uh, uh, corridors uh, and to make sure that you are following up anything happen to your network or close to your network and that's all of our play role in here and one of the things that is again part of um, one of the policy actions is this development of the centralized infrastructure database by 2014 I mean do you see is that something that's feasible how do you see that being borne out in the, in the next 12. Again, please. A, a, a database of um, assets, infrastructure assets, that can be used or to stimulate deployment. Uh, yeah. Uh, what happens, uh, the ownership of these assets, it is, uh, it is shared between uh, Ashgal and the other governmental entities. So uh, what we are doing this nowadays, we're trying to uh, laser scan the entire country in here in 3D and uh, this project started almost eight months ago and we're trying also to uh, ground penetrate uh, with the uh, ultrasound uh, survey for the entire country to take to take or to collect the all infrastructure and above the service information 
So we will have the entire country in 3D, not only as a building, also as a layer, the geological layer, so you will know where is your network over there and what is existing right now and how to plan the things, how to propose based on those three things. And uh, most probably that we are going to put all of this in a private cloud if the broadband, uh, national broad, uh, QMPN allow us or one of, uh, one of their competitors. And uh, to share this whole of data and infrastructure to be decentralized with the entire government so everybody will update this data as a 3D and as uh, applicable building information management, that's what we call it, the BIM system, which is will help you to identify everything. And after that, we need to build up uh, the other systems on top of it, like intelligent transportation system and uh, uh, the other uh, application that will make more transparency between the governmental activities and the public and the government sharing with the other uh, government entity. So uh, the ownership, it will be uh, uh, determined for all of those people. We will maintain their, their databases uh, over there and they will let them look after their assets uh, as an owners for all those databases. Uh, did I hear you correct there when you talked about a th 3D geographic database effectively? Is that, is that, was that correct? Yeah. I mean, that's quite sophisticated. I mean, in terms of many markets around the world, I can't name many that you know, follow that kind of approach. So that, that's a very positive thing, I think, for Qatar. Just the last question to you, uh, Nasser, in terms of coordination between uh, infrastructure deployments. Do you see any opportunity as regards, um, you know, synergies between telecoms and other infrastructures being rolled out, particularly in the greenfield areas, for example, with utility networks? Uh, let me put it this way. Uh, first of all, we are government and sharing only with governments because this type of sharing is containing a lot of information and a lot of data, and this data is supposed to be gone from data. It's supposed to wrap with the security and, and, and uh, one ownership. And since it's between government and government, it's okay. Once there is a third party is coming up to this uh, kind of share, it's supposed to be sponsored by one of those governmental entities. Uh, let, let me put, uh, more, make it more clear. Uh, we can share with uh, Kyoto, uh, or sorry, uh, Oridu. I'm still going to the past, uh, with the phone and all the others. But this is supposed to be regulated and supposed to be through the ICT ministry. We can give an approval for them for excavation and some roads or implementing some of their network or something. But all of this is supposed to be regulated through ICT ministry. So our approval, it is as Ashgal or even as, a, 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 if I can say, a, the Ministry of Municipal it's supposed to be from uh, government to government. It's supposed to go to ICT Qatar. And ICT Qatar, they authorize those people to execute their projects for them for short or long term. If it is like this, we don't have any problem and everything can go as easy and fast. If it is not, uh, why we're saying all of this? Because there is two types of, of government uh, uh, ownership, uh, of ownership, sorry, in here. One of it is a private, and the other one is a government. The government, which is in, in road corridors, and we have to put only governmental networks over there. This governmental networks has uh, corridors over there, and you have, we have to manage all of this, representing, uh, representing the ownership of the government in, in, uh, in the roads. So we have to manage all of those corridors. How to manage those road corridors, uh, I mean utility corridors, it is through the ownership of this one. And it's supposed to be a purely government, non-private in there. And that's what happened with the uh, Qatar Cool Network. They started as, as in a private company, but since they are in governmental utility, we uh, contain Qatar Cool too after that. Okay, excellent, thank you. Um, Anthony. We've heard quite a bit about fiber and passive infrastructure. Uh, you perhaps take a different view on what Qatar needs. Um, can you say a little bit about what you see HLSAT providing and how it fits in with the, with the plan? Certainly. Um, our first satellite has 
several missions and most of them are, are, the capacity is gone but there's one particular mission which would be ideal for Qatar it's, uh, it's uh, in, in the upper frequencies it means you can deploy small equipment uh, you can provide a, a broadband experience um, it's somewhat unique but uh, it could be used for those areas which are maybe out of reach, mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, need a, a broadband instantly because our satellite's ready now. So if you wanted to deploy something very quickly. Um, so it could be for the rural networks, mm -hmm. uh, for the labor camps, uh, typically oil platforms use them. Um, also for the high reliability services, um, may, maybe, maybe even for um, Ashgal on the road intelligent traffic system. Mm -hmm. If they want a, a diverse route away from the from cables on the ground, yeah, that could be provided. For the rail system, perhaps, if you want a, a, a consumer TV and, and, and multimedia experience on a train, that sort of a, uh, and, and you're away from the from the uh, conurbation. Perhaps that's a, that's a solution as well. And is, is there any link with the smart city concept that we heard about earlier today? Sorry? A, is there any link or any opportunity for Eshel Sat in, in the smart city kind of concept? Certainly. I, I think, again, because the, the service is already there, you could deploy um, machine to machine uh, uh, sensors and, and, and the satellite could uh, provide a, an alternative to uh, the terrestrial w way of bringing it. Also, because we provide this ubiquitous service over a whole, whole coverage area. If you uh, are using a sensor in, in Qatar and then you wanted to move to UAE or GCC or MENA, if this on a mobile platform, the same equipment would work everywhere. So, and likewise, you can import that equipment. Blair mentioned the importance of spectrum as part of uh, plans and because we've been talking about infrastructure so much we haven't really had the opportunity to discuss that but of course any discussion about satellite always brings into you know uh, question spectrum and the plan does talk about a spectrum management and release plan are there any specific aspects of that that you would like to feed into or have concerns about? Well, spectrum is the, the lifeblood of all wireless systems and uh, particularly satellite as well. So I think what we're looking for is uh, clarity in the regulations. Mm -hmm. So our business plans are 15, 20 years per, per satellite. Yep. So we need certainty over that period of what the regulations and what the access to spectrum would be. Now, spectrum is very contested between the terrestrial systems and competition within our industry as well. So the spectrum allocated to uh, satellite, we counted that there's 75 satellites you can see from, uh, from Qatar. So the potential reuse factor is, is very efficient. So with, with sharing spectrum, uh, there's, there's two issues, one a national and uh, one an international. On the national basis, uh, we would like to see uh, some spectrum allocated to, to satellites on a, on a preferred basis and some for mobile. And, uh, but we need to get this cleared with, uh, with our neighbors, within the GCC, within the Arab group, <coughs> and then maybe internationally through the International Telecommunications Union. Um, we uh, have been supported very well by the ministry and Hashim here has worked for us on, in, in the international forum trying to, uh, to help us gain the access we require. Yep. And the regulatory authority has also been uh, most helpful in trying to uh, secure a spectrum for us. So j just to be clear, I mean, the plan itself doesn't make any judgments yet on how spectrum may be allocated in the future, but it does call for clarity or certainty as you, as you uh, require. So hopefully that will be addressed in due course. Um, Ahmed, let's move on to the international connectivity part now, please. Um, we heard a little bit about, in your, in your introductory comments, about how Qatar is, uh, compares to other countries, but could you just expand on that a little bit and explain, you know, are, there any, are there any potential bottlenecks at the moment in terms of international capacity, or is you know, Gulf Bridge current network and future plans sufficient to deal with you know, the demand that the, uh, the National Broadband Plan may place on, on the state? Sure. Uh, just uh, to answer the part why, uh, what's the difference between Qatar and the other countries uh, in the region from the capacity point of view, the international capacity, 
generally in this industry, in the subsea cable industry, we divide the region into two categories, inside the Gulf or countries around the Gulf and countries outside the Gulf. Uh, the countries outside the Gulf, by geography, used to enjoy the access of all the international cables connecting Asia to Europe and vice versa. Uh, the countries inside the Gulf or around the Gulf, uh, they depend somehow on connectivity uh, for international access, uh, either tristily through other countries or even if it is subsea, it will connect through uh, other countries as well that to provide them the connectivity to other international cables. This is definitely a great privilege by geography. Sometimes it's not fair to give that kind of uh, access uh, to these countries. Uh, Qatar made a smart move by making this investment in GBI to provide this kind of fair access to all the countries, not only Qatar, but all the countries within the Gulf in a very fair way from the operator's point of view. We have double landing here with uh, Redu and Vodafone, uh, which is definitely also showing that it's, it's fair access to, all, to uh, the licensed telecom operators here to, for the international access, as well as the other countries <coughs> in the region. So this is definitely a differentiator here that uh, such kind of investment is bringing to Qatar and to the region. Uh, the demand and the growth on, uh, on the demand, uh, this cable is providing terabits of uh, capacity uh, that can uh, serve uh, Qatar for uh, the coming years uh, with the uh, exponential growth on the demand in, in all the sectors. Uh, as I mentioned, the deploying of uh, deployment of the uh, national broadband plan will help to allow this kind of access and to use this kind of huge capacity to the end users. Okay. The um, the plan also, and this may go into it's on the boundary, I guess, between um, where you typically operate. But I'd be interested in your views on the idea or the concept of an internet exchange point in Qatar, of course, or the other uh, internet exchange points. The, yes. Of course, the, the, the Gulf has a, a, has a number of them. Qatar doesn't have one yet. Clearly, there's a direct le link into the nature of your business. Do you think it's a good idea that um, an IXP, an internet ex exchange point, would be developed here? And what would be needed to, you know, to make it work properly? Okay. Good idea? Yes, it's a good idea. To have an internet exchange uh, here uh, in Qatar, uh, it's an idea that uh, we support. Uh, but to make this happen, to be successful, uh, let's first talk about the internet exchange. Is, is 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 a place where all the carriers can meet with also the content uh, providers, and they serve each other to provide the service to the end users. Uh, the main two components for uh, the a successful internet uh, exchange uh, is diversity of international access. This is very important to be there. And the availability of digital contents. Uh, providing the diversity of uh, the international access, investing on that and, and the satellite as well, all of these kind of uh, international access connectivity, this definitely, and the diversity is a must here to have a proper successful uh, IXP. Uh, the availability of the contents uh, is mandatory as well uh, to be able to host these uh, uh, contents and to attract uh, the major content uh, players globally and regionally uh, to host uh, their data here. Uh, Qatar already invested also in uh, data centers uh, with uh, international standards like MISA. Who, uh, and this is definitely another enabler to, uh, for the IXP to be here and make it ready and successful. Okay, excellent, thank you. Um, we have about 10 minutes left, so I'm quickly gonna go uh, over to Hashim just to give from your perspective, this, this, this is uh, a plan that was produced or led by MICT. 
Um, just if you could give us your, your thoughts on what you've heard from the panelists so far as regards the plan um, and what you see you know, the key next steps are really in terms of uh, moving into a delivery phase. Thank you. Uh, first of all, the sound is not very clear. I think the room has not been, been designed properly acoustically. So, um, I think the plan, certainly the role of ICT in the plan to be um, executed, would be the guidance, um, guidance um, with respect to um, to how it get it will get executed. And I think that as I. As I uh, um, it's a collaboration. It's a collaboration between all three or four, even. Um, early this year, and in May, I go back to the international conferences. There was um, a forum, which is very famous. I'm sure, Matt, you are aware of it. You, you played an important role in that. It's the World Telecommunication Policy Forum. Uh, a day was allocated for the fact to say how important broadband is to the nation, to the world. And as we know, that one of the themes, again, of the ITU connecting the world is the ICT for all. And as we all know that we are moving from the age of information to age of knowledge. So broadband is very important, and this is why this plan came, this national plan came about. So ICT knowing all these, and, and the fact that we are uh, working very hard towards achieving um, the broadband goals and also the ICT for all, I think the role of ICT um, is quite important um, with regard to the regulations and, and, and supporting the operators and, uh, and guidance which has to be, um, has to be um, performed. And we are, um, we are, I think ICT is doing that. But certainly one of the importance of the, of the plan is that it has to be regarded by all that in that forum, in that international forum, it was, it was debated whether broadband now as important to individual as gas, electricity, water, energy. And now it has become true. We have to, we have to, um, uh, to, to move to the, to the age of knowledge. Then broadband has to reach every household. And this is the plan which indicates it, one of the most important areas of, of the planet. So the ICT should uh, uh, role is that to, to encourage and, uh, and guide, give the guidance to the operators and, and individuals and um, the public awareness that, that, that availability of broadband is very important. And I, I think that by, by collaborating and uh, all parties, I think that it will be achievable. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Hashim. Um, I think at this point, um, I'd just like to give some final comments. I mean, I think Blair set the scene very, very well with regards to his message about execution. Um, we've seen a number of national broadband plans uh, that are very, very high level. Uh, we have attempted in this one uh, for Qatar to produce a range of uh, tangible policy actions with clear dates and targets. Uh, and clear next steps. And uh, I do think that that will set Qatar up very well to take this uh, plan from a concept into a reality. Um, I think we are close to our allotted time. So I think we will look to draw uh, this panel to a close now. Um, it's been a very interesting first discussion. I hope you'll agree. Uh, and it sets the scene really for the remainder of uh, the day which uh, moves more from the infrastructure side into, into the demand side. So I hope you uh, uh, enjoyed this first set of uh, discussions. Please join me in thanking all of our panelists for taking part in the session. <laughs>